Hello, welcome to the presentation on pressure, force and surface area. Uh, the objectives of this presentation is to teach you the uh, formula for pressure and uh, hopefully uh, give you an insight into how hydraulic systems work. Uh, the reason I've got a picture of a knife and some snowshoes here is they're both good examples of where we use uh, force and surface area to either increase pressure, as in the uh, case of the knife, or decrease surface area, as in the case of the snowshoes. Okay, uh, Knives have a very small surface area over which uh, you apply a force. This increases the pressure and the snowshoes spread out the force of your weight over a greater area, meaning that you have a lower pressure on the snow and you don't sink into it. Okay, so we do probably, most people have a, an instinctive understanding of pressure. You would know that uh, if somebody was going to walk on your back wearing high heels, it would hurt. And if they were wearing shoes, it might still hurt, but it certainly wouldn't hurt as much as with the high heels. Okay, so high heels would be pretty lethal. The reason why you know this is because you already understand pressure. Okay, but if we want to understand pressure quantitatively, be able to calculate it and uh, things like that, we need to define it very clearly. Pressure is defined as force divided by area. The units are usually newtons divided by meter squared. Although you can use different uh, units as long as you're still doing force divided by area. So I could have this in millinewtons or I could have it in another measurement of force other than newtons or I could have my area in centimeter squared, millimeter squared and so on. As long as I kept uh, my units consistent throughout my calculations and um, I gave the unit uh, my final answer, all would be well. Okay, so the high heel gives us a much greater force because it's got a very small area, not a greater force, sorry, a greater pressure, because it has a much smaller area, right? Whereas the trainer, or sneaker, as the Americans call them, has a much larger area and therefore a much smaller pressure. And that's why it would be more comfortable for somebody to walk on your back wearing that. So here is a typical ex exam type question. Okay. So let's work through this question. Okay, take a moment to read the question. Pause the video and read the question. Okay. So when you take out all the dross from this question, all the confusing and not so useful things, you realize that you have uh, a 40 newton force that is being applied over a 0 0.025 meter squared area and you're just asked to calculate the pressure. So not too complicated. So what I always do is I write down the formula I'm using. This will give you marks if you make mistakes later on in the question. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. Put my numbers into my formula. 40 newtons divided by 0 0.025 and now I need to get my calculator And I oh, did this second practice go at this. So 40 divided by 0 0.0225, and it's 1,600. So 1,600 newtons per meter squared. Okay. It's vital you always put units in. If you don't put the units in, you lose marks. So what do I get the marks for in this question? Typically, I'd get a mark for the correct answer and a mark for the correct units. That's the two marks. But if I'd made a mistake here, like gave the wrong answer numerically, I could still get a mark for the formula. Always write the formula, okay? Right. Now let's talk about hydraulic systems. In this picture here, we see somebody squeezing this ball. And you can see that. Well, initially the ball might look like this, and afterwards, when you squeeze it, it looks like this. When you squeeze this uh, ball, you're increasing the pressure of the fluid inside the ball, and the fluid will be the, s the pressure in the fluid will be the same at all points inside the fluid. So P will be equal to P at all these points. Uh, this is quite useful, and we can use it to make hydraulic systems. Just get rid of the ink here. Okay, whoops. Okay, here is a good example of a hydraulic system. Uh, how do these work? Right. Basically, you have 
two cylinders, or obviously in the case of this, you might have more cylinders controlled by switches and such forth. Okay. If I want to multiply the force I'm applying to something, I would use the side of my piston. Oh, this is just basically like two syringes, and inside here is a fluid, like water or oil. Uh, if I apply a force to this syringe here and move it through a small distance, let's say I move it through this distance, it's going to move this syringe um, through a distance as well. But the distance it will move it will be less than the distance that was moved on this side. It might only move it, say, to here. So we've gone through a distance change on this side, which is much smaller than the distance change on this side. Because the volume of the fluid is going to take up more, well, it's going to take up less horizontal space on this side. Okay, so what we lost in distance travelled, we will gain in force. Because the work you do on this side will be equal to the work that's done on this side. Remember, work is equal to force times distance. On this side must be equal to the force times the distance on this side. So if the distance has gone down, the force must go up to keep things balanced. But it's much easier actually to, to think of this in terms of pressure and use the pressure equation to work out these things. So that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so here we have um, an example of an application of using fluids to transmit force. This is typical of a braking system in a car. Okay, so let's say you apply, as it says in the question, just take a second to read the question, maybe pause the video. If you apply a 200 Newton force here, 200 newtons, then whatever pressure you cause in this liquid, it's going to be the same throughout. It's all going to be the same pressure. So, I can calculate the pressure by um, dividing the force. Let's call this F, because it's on piston A, I'll call it F little a. Divided by the area of that piston, I'll call it A. A. Okay, so pressure is equal to force divided by area. Um, so the pressure exerted in the fluid is going to be FA over AA. Okay, and that should also be equal to. Well, it's 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 equal throughout. Anyway, so let's calculate the pressure in the fluid first. 200 newtons divided by the area. Now because uh, everything in this question is in centimeters squared. I don't really need to change the units. I can stick with centimeters squared, and um, and uh, it won't cause me any problems. So 200 divided by two gives me 100 um, newtons per. And, and be careful that you, if you're going to work in centimeters squared, you always show your pressure in centimeters squared. Right. So I've calculated the pressure in the fluid. Since the pressure is the same throughout the fluid. And since I know the area here, I can use the same formula, pressure is equal to force divided by area, to calculate the force on piston B. So this time, pressure is equal to FB over AB, because it's the force on B, and the area of B. And because I know um, P and A, I can rearrange for FB. Okay, so if I multiply both sides of this equation by AB, uh, I can cancel AB out from this side, and I have uh, A. Whoops, not delta. <laughs> AB is e sorry multiplied by P is equal to FB. Okay, just ignore this mistake. Okay, so stick the numbers in. Uh, the area here it says eight centimeters. Eight, and I can stay in centimeters because I use centimeters here. Multiplied by the pressure, 100 newtons per centimeter is equal to my force. Eight times 100 is 800. What are the units? Newtons. So that's my final answer. Okay, hopefully this made some sense. If it didn't, just post some comments and maybe I can help. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Goodbye. I stop. <laughs>